Yo, what's cracking mates? Long time no see. Even though I've missed my goal of releasing a video last month, I've got something here which should make up for it at least. A thing rather unusual and quite obscure. Did you know that World of Warcraft has two moons visible from Kalimdor and Eastern Kingdoms? And both existed ever since the very beginning of the game. Even the 053 friends and family alpha already included them. I've checked it myself. They are called the White Lady and the Blue Child. Yes, they do in fact have names. How come you never noticed the child back in the day when you spent hours immersed in Azeroth? Well, that's pretty easy to answer. Because... you couldn't. Starting with patch 1.10, some code in the client changed and thus the second moon no longer appeared. It took 6 years and 5 months until patch 504 ruled out in order for it to be fixed and our lovely little blue pebble being visible again. I myself only knew because I heard someone talk about it on the WoW modding discord, naming a texture file for a second moon which seemingly was unused. Sometime late at night last week, the memory about it suddenly resurfaced. My brain really does work in mysterious ways. And since I have the attention span of a hamster, I put all my current projects immediately on hold and started investigating. For your enjoyment and to give you an understanding of the thought process behind this reversing task, here is a quick reenactment. Keep in mind that the Ghidra repository you will be seeing in the following clips did not have most of the relevant function and variables named when I started out. And it certainly took way longer to piece together all the parts than it appears here in the video. So, where to start at? My first clue obviously, the name of the unused texture file. Let's open my 335a Ghidra repo and search for it as a string. Let's make sure the scope is set to search all and then type moon02. And sure enough, we already got it. Textures moon02.blp. Double clicking the entry jumps to the location of the string and Ghidra tells us that there is just a single cross reference in the application. How convenient! Let's follow and see what is done with this string. We are now in a function where references to the texture for the other moon as well as the sun appear close by. A golden opportunity to learn if they are doing something different than moon zero two since those seem to work correctly. Like I said earlier in the video, I did not have the benefit of named functions or variables in the beginning. So, no way for me to know that the function where the texture file string is passed to is initializing a planet and certainly not that the first argument is the pointer to the global variable where the planet struct will be stored at. The first course of action from there on was simply peeking at the data labels and noting down their offsets. Doing so already gave me another hint. They were consistently 32 bytes apart. It could of course be an unhelpful lead, but after all we have to follow all traces. Now let's have a glimpse at the function itself. Uh, not really all that helpful. Ok, let's try another approach to get more information. We start the client, connect with cheat engine and inspect the memory at the three offsets. Remember, the planet structs should be 32 bytes long, which corresponds to 8 4-byte blocks. You might ask yourself, wait, why does it mention 4-byte blocks specifically? The reason for that is that most primitive variable types have that size and certainly when we are talking about 32-bit apps. If I remember correctly, all positions in the game are processed as float, which are 4 bytes, and int as well as pointers have the very same size, for example. In essence, you simply can't do wrong looking at unknown structs in chunks of 4 bytes initially, at least. As you could see, I already jumped to the first offset and changed the display type to 4 byte hex. 
In addition, I resized the window beforehand, so the first row contains 8 blocks of the sun, the second row is the white lady and the third is our beloved blue child. Comparing the values column by column, I could verify that everything looks quite fine and dandy. Everything except the fourth column, it somehow stood out with its value of zero. It's trial and error time. I copy over the current value from the first moon, add this offset to the cheat engine watchlist and let it track write accesses. Provided it turns out that this value is indeed responsible, we can determine if it either is never set correctly or constantly overwritten with a wrong value. In order to speed up the debugging process, I use my camera tool and increase the speed with which the day-night cycle passes by a little bit. Now it's all about poking around in the dark, quite literally. And it turns out we guessed right. Suddenly another body appears in the sky. Let's try to catch a full cycle of this second moon on camera next time. It certainly seems to be not always present at the same time as the other one. The color for the blue child might be off, since we were just randomly guessing and copying over a value from the first moon. Also, take note that this value we manually set has never been written to a single time until now. Off camera, I compared this behavior with the other moon and the sun as well, which both have its value written to constantly. My assumption therefore is that the second moon doesn't show up any longer, because this value doesn't get set at all. Since I have a Gita repository for 053 as well, I try to find the same texture string we started with and see if I can infer more information from over there. Bingo. Also a single cross reference. Let's see how the function which takes the string looks like. The first argument is a pointer to DN planet. Thank god this leaked version had most of its struct definitions included. Looking at that, I can already see that the fourth 4 byte block is the M color attribute. Each of its bytes is either corresponding to a color or alpha channel. Amazingly enough, this struct is also 32 bytes long, which means it's most likely the very same as in use for our 335A client. After importing the struct definition in the other repository and adjusting the function signature and global variable type, our decompilation already starts making way more sense. The huge benefit is that we can now easily cross-reference attribute access to the blue child. Let's see if anything in fact does access M color of the second moon. This first access is somehow related to setting the alpha channel and it seems like I haven't ran into this code path yet since it didn't get tracked by cheat engine back then. The second one looks like a function designed to initialize the data of the three planet structs with zeros. To fix this issue, I decided to simply tack on an assembly instruction at the end, which initializes mcolor for the second moon with a static value. To get the correct value, I was debugging the alpha client and it turns out that the value is always zero there as well. That means it never has been set, but the drawing logic for the planets changed. As a solution, I decided to instead copy the color value from the first moon of my 335A client when it was up at night. The blue color of the child comes actually from the texture file itself. The M color attribute seems to be some kind of filter from what my debugging revealed. Now at the end of the video, I want to mention a few things. Number one is that the blue child will be rather bright and maybe even white during the day, but a crisp blue at night. This seems to be consistent with screenshots from the olden times I saw of it. Number two is that both the sun and the white lady have their own glare effect. This glare effect though has never been implemented for the blue child. My simple fix doesn't add one, and you could even argue that it is more bliss like this way. But to increase bliss likeness, it would have to stay broken, if we are being honest. 
Number three is a task for you, Mr. and Mrs. Viewer. If you're playing on one of the official classic servers, could you let me know if you have seen the blue child over there? I'm curious if Blizzard has broken the blue child on purpose again to match the old expansions. My fourth point is about the size and cycle time of the blue child. While the white lady has a scale of 1.75 and a cycle time of 1 which corresponds to 24 ingame hours, the second moon has only a scale of 1 but instead a cycle time of 1.7. This means it rises every 40.8 hours. This is the reason you might not see them together every time. Keep in mind that even if they are up at the same time, they might not fit on your screen as they are very far apart in the sky. There is also no use in trying to reach them, as their positions are always drawn in relation to yours. And last but not least, Project Ascension has not only the restored moon, but the crazy assembly wizard behind the fix also implemented the glare effect. Maybe you know this if you play over there. That's it for the day. I hope you learned a thing or two about reversing, or at least had fun soaking up some WoW trivia. See ya!